All right, so we've created this spaceship uh, saucer texture using the polar designer and um, well we've gotten to this point and so what's uh, what we want to do next is create possibly some uh, some windows and that sort of thing so uh, bear with me as I haven't really practiced this but we're gonna dive in and see what we can do let's start with the line tool um, there's probably a lot of ways you could create windows but we'll go ahead and start with this tool here and I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have a current backup of that so I can come back to it later. Um, and we're going to use the graphical lines. I'll just go ahead and clear my image for now. And when we're using a graphical line, we get this really sharp uh, rectangular looking uh, thing instead of the natural media. So we'll go ahead and use that. We'll use uh, the dash style, or maybe the dash dot, I'm not sure. One of these, and we'll see what we can do with that. Um, we'll probably want to just go ahead and make this um, more opaque, and let's work with that. Uh, there's probably a lot of ways we can do this. We'll have to change the size, of course. Down quite a bit. That ought to work. And this is just going to be an example. So, uh, let's see. We we'll want something along the outside. And we'll probably want something towards the middle, too. But as we go in, we'll probably want them to get bigger. So let's see what we can do with what we end up here. End up with. Um, I might change that style to dot as we get closer to the middle. All right, let's see what we can do with that. Let's uh, let's put this on another layer. I'll just store it. Um, I want this in my background. Let's add a layer. Drop that down. Okay, let's go to Polar Designer and let's see what we can do with that. Under Transform Warp, uh, we got several types of. Uh, things we can do with this let's go ahead and use the first one that looks all right um, pretty good pretty good let's see I think I like that one better but then we have to uh, let's see That's kind of fun. No, we might have to use that one. All right, so eh, that might do. Let's see what we can do with that. That's something. Um, we don't just want black windows, though. Let's see what else we can do with this. Let's store a copy of this. There's any number of things we can do with that at that point, of course. Um, we could just go ahead and merge these. All right, so we have these black windows we really probably don't want these as part of our texture so I'm gonna keep a copy of our texture here so we can come back to that we'll probably want the windows by themselves um, let's see what else we can do with this we, do, we could of course combine these with uh, some of the different uh, layer modes and see what happens let's see subtract of course would uh, give you the opposite of that <laughs> 
Um, we could emboss if we wanted to. We could add them. Let's see. We could. If we wanted to add them, we would need the inverse of this. So I'll go to the swap image, place paste that down, and reverse this image. And then it would just be a matter of you could either combine it directly from the swap image or you can make a copy of it here and do it that way with the combined modes like that. So let me go back to that. I'll use the filter combine additive. That's one way we could do that. Um, but we want some borders around these, so let's uh, let's make another image here. Let's go back to that swap image, and let's do uh, a convolution on that. That'll let it grow or shrink or something similar. I think we could do Sobel edges and make a border. Okay, that's good. But I think we want to grow these before we do the Sobel edges. So let's uh, maximize these. Let's see. I think that would be right. Because we want to maximize the bright color. Let's see. That's right. That, that'll cause them to grow. Then we'll do Sobel edges. And that'll give us our outline. Store a copy of that. And go back here. We can combine these with the image with uh, subtract. That'll give us our outlines for the windows. And then we could possibly add these in that sort of thing that's one way we could do it um, although we would probably want these as a, a luminance map so uh, maybe it's not quite the time yet to add those in or let me see I'll go ahead and keep that let's go back here it'd be good if some of these windows were on and some were off so um I think we'd probably use the paint fill tool maybe to make some of these off or just take them out with the rectangle tool probably would be better. Whoops, I'm going to turn off that. Uh, that um, graphical style, which is here and put it back on natural media let's see make sure you're on the rectangle fill mode fill shape um, there's a little dividing line if you click on the top corner you get unfilled and if you click on the bottom corner of that you get the filled so that's a little shortcut to turning uh, filling on and off for the rectangle and we can just go in and turn off some of these lights the, uh, the old-fashioned way A quick way to do that and there you go one way you can turn lights on and off um not sure what to do next maybe you know you can turn some off by subtracting them and that sort of thing so um those are a few few things you can do to create windows um like i said i was going into this cold without practicing it so you get the idea though anyways um a little more planning i think i could have done that a little bit better but uh i think you get the idea uh thanks for watching and talk to you later